Hello everyone and welcome back to Building Nations. In the last episode we laid out all of these beautiful plans you can see here and in this episode I want to do a little bit more with these. I want to get the docks generally laid out and I want to put in where the different buildings are going to be going. I also think well, we can squeeze in finishing up the rest of the detailing on the exterior side of the castle, so I'm going to do that as well. Let's see how it goes. But first, over here in the docks, just to let you know kind of what's going on and why I'm making certain decisions here, you can see that a lot of the terrain here is one level up above this sea, like it's not level with the sea, a lot of this is one level up, which is good, like because making it above the water makes more sense than making it in line with the water in my opinion. So we're going to stick the dock one block above the water. However, as you go further this way, you see that it becomes level ground. So I'm just going to like kind of bring this terrain over and raise this wall up uh, and the tower up a bit. So just one block, just so it's kind of even and it will look a lot better that way. So yeah, now you know. All right, so to plan this whole thing out, I wanted to start uh, obviously by raising the terrain there, but I wanted to start with the docks because like, I had no idea what exactly I wanted to do with them at this point, so I wanted to kind of get a general idea for how they were going to look. Um, I wanted it to come off of the coast by, like, a set amount, so that it's pretty even, like, throughout, even though um, the, like, place where it is will change the width of the dock would stay even. So I wanted it to be like even. Um, <laughs> so I went out like nine blocks or so and tried to kind of map that around the whole outside. Um, but that kind of took a little while and it didn't really work all the time. Like there were a lot of places where there was just too irregular of a shape to where it would work like not work out well. I also decided to move that um, wall and tower segment because it wouldn't have made sense for the dock to go beyond there where it was before since it would have been right next to the coast on the other side and like why even have a wall if you could just walk into the dock anyway. So that's why I did that. Now with these buildings I wanted them to kind of match the shape of the dock so anyone walking along the dock would have the buildings just kind of always there. They wouldn't have to go like past the dock to reach the buildings. So I tried to kind of make them match the shape a little bit. Um, it ended up getting some interesting shapes. Like you can see I have those buildings have like uneven walls. Um, and I think it'll work out. Some of them are like parallelograms. <laughs> which... I made a lot of it first, but as time went on, I tried to do them less and less, just because I feel like they won't work out super well in theory, but we'll have to see what happens when I actually end up building them. Also throughout the planning here, I wanted to use a lot of diagonals, like there are a lot of diagonal houses and diagonal walls, just because that makes them much more like natural and good looking cityscape in my opinion to have diagonal houses and stuff so that's what I wanted to try and do a lot of. Um, also throughout this planning process you'll see that the corners on the corners of the walls I have placed like a little extra block diagonally uh, outside and that's because when I build houses I usually do like that sort of thing where you have a wall and then a block in front of the wall on the corner and I wanted to show that in my planning so that I knew like where the roads had to be to make sure that the plans made sense so that's why you'll see that and that's about it in terms of how I planned things there isn't really too much more um, in that department in terms of like 
what I'm doing. Um, I do try to think about what exactly I am making when I'm planning things out, um, but really it's just a bunch of buildings, so there isn't like a whole lot of variation there. I also tried to put in some like alleys and other things um, just in various places just to kind of add a bit to the environment. And yeah, that's about it. So, the rest of this video <laughs> can talk about uh, Minecraft Live happened recently. If you didn't watch it, I recommend that you do uh, before we jump into it, but it is the Caves and Cliffs update. And we got a lot of information on the caves, but not a whole lot on the cliffs, which is kind of disappointing. Um, because, you know, the cliffs were like what people voted in. So we got to see like one screenshot of the t new terrain, which looks really cool. And goats, <laughs> which, you know, they're goats. They're cool. I hope they do things like they're there, they add to it, but they're kind of just like mountain cows, I guess. Like, they'll probably drop beef and wool or something. So maybe more like mountain sheep, I don't know. Maybe there'll be goat fur as like an item you can use to make yourself, make yourself less susceptible to the snow. That would be cool. That would have like actual use for the mob, instead of not having any actual use. <laughs> Which is, like I hate it when they add things uh, that have no purpose. Which is why I'm pretty opposed to the archaeology system. It is cool, sure. You get to make pots that have custom designs. But what do they do? <laughs> what can you do with a pot other than just have a pot? Can you cook things with it? Is it better to use a pot to cook things instead of a furnace? Like... <laughs> It's great that they exist, but if they don't do anything, then why even add them? Like, I don't get it. Like, archaeology dig sites are cool, but, like, what do they do? <laughs> it just doesn't make sense to me why they add a thing like that, instead of, like, putting more effort into the actual caves and cliffs themselves. Can you find archaeology stuff in the caves? But, like, what would you even find? What would it be good for? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Another thing, the brush, if the brushed blocks stayed, like, you can use a brush and, like, decrease the height of a block, right? But if once you stop brushing, the block breaks. What if, like, it didn't break when you stopped brushing? Then that would be a really cool feature, because you could get, like, gravel and dirt and stuff in, like, uneven formations. And, like, you can add to terrain and stuff by doing that. And that exists in a mod already. Um, the Conquest Reforged mod adds in a lot of things like that. Where you can have, like, different layers of blocks. And I think it'd be really cool if they added it into uh, Vanilla Minecraft. But I don't know if they ever will. <laughs> it is kind of a bit of a more out there building feature. But I got really excited when I first saw that. Because I was like, wow, they just added this into the game. That's insane. But then they didn't. <laughs> so, it's a little uh, disappointed. Maybe that's why I'm so upset with archaeology. Because I was really excited for being able to get like gravel and dirt slabs. But, nope. <laughs> Guess not. What else? Um, in the lush caves, it looked like there were also like a kind of grass carpet as well. Which is really cool uh, as a building feature can like place it down and it you know adds variation in the height of a single layer which is really cool um, another thing the lush caves look, themselves look really cool a lot of like nice blocks that you can use for building and plants and stuff to add to both underground and above ground environments so that's that's I'm really excited for that um, however in the caves themselves there is one thing that I am not particularly fond of, and that was the crystal geodes. They exist, and you can get the crystals from them, but the block that the crystals grow on looks really good. The only problem is you're not allowed to take it with you, which doesn't make sense to me. Like, the whole point is that you find a bunch of them and use them to farm crystals, but like, 
that's just weird. <laughs> Like, why can't you take it with you? You can't farm them on the go, which is fine, but you should at least still be able to mine the block so you can use it. It's just, like, another really nice block that you just, like, you just can't use. It's weird. It's like you see dragon eggs used in creative builds sometimes, because they're, they're a cool-looking block for a lot of situations, but you can't get them in survival, so survival players just kind of miss out on that aspect of building things and I feel like this is another block that does that also like creative players will be able to use this very nice looking purple block and survival people just can't <laughs> it's just okay I don't really play this game in survival all that often but I mean that still upsets me if, if I was to be playing in survival I would like I'd be upset and the crystals we saw that they're used in telescopes which is also just kind of like optifying zooming, but that's okay. They're used in telescopes. Is that it? Is that their only use? They're only used in telescopes? Like, nothing else? <laughs> that seems kind of odd. I feel like they, they're probably going to add more uses for them, because that's just really strange to have telescopes be the only use for it. I hope they add more, uh, because otherwise I'd be upset. Because there's no reason to get a telescope when you can just use Optifine Zoom, which does the same thing, but with no cost, <laughs> instead of having to, you know, use resources. It's just very weird. Another thing, <laughs> they added in Copper Underground, which is interesting. Um, that It's a cool-looking building block, and you also use it for the telescope and the lightning rod. Uh, the lightning rod is useful, not in the way they described it in the actual show, in my opinion. Like, you can draw lightning away from your house, but also if your house isn't made out of wood, it's not even a problem to begin with. Or, like, wood or wool, um, it's not a problem if your, like, house is struck by lightning. And even if it is, I know a lot of people play with fire tick off, just because, like, a lava pool could burn down an entire forest. Like... <laughs> So, people play with fire tick off. Like, I would play with fire tick off, so there's no point in having a lightning rod to stop my house from being set on fire, since fire wouldn't spread anyway. Um, so that's interesting. Copper being used in the telescope is cool. I like that, instead of, like, iron, just because it gives copper more of a use. And then there's copper as a building block. It looks okay. <laughs> I think... Uh, I don't know if the actual texture that we saw in Minecraft Live will be the same as it is in the final game, and I hope not, because it looks okay, but there are better options, in my opinion, uh, for a copper sort of color. And then, copper oxidizing. I think it would be really cool if you could get copper that would not oxidize, because you'd have to, like, Let's say you made your roofs out of orange, right? Like, you like orange. Like, you need that orange color. And then it's just like, ha, nope, it's green now. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what if you, you used it in something that wasn't your roof? Where you're not using the copper to be copper, you're using it because it's an orange block. And then it just becomes green. Like, that's just, that's annoying. And it's problematic. So... I think if there was a way to get a permanently orange copper, that would be ideal. And also the green, like just use prismarine. It's cheaper to farm and you won't have to go mining extensively. We don't know what the like cost of those blocks will be. I hope it's not like you get a copper ingot and then turn that copper ingot into a copper block, which is what you placed, because that would be insanely expensive very fast. Even if copper is the most abundant resource you find, it would still take a very large amount. And with that, all of these houses have been laid and planned out. Well, and there's a lot of them. <laughs> Certainly is a lot of them. <laughs> I don't know how long this will take to do all of... to make all of these into unique buildings, but I imagine it will take quite some time to do. <laughs> um, yeah. Didn't end up getting the detail done just because this whole planning process took a lot longer than I expected it to. So, didn't get to 
get to that, but that's okay. We'll do it at some point, just not yet. And yeah, I think that's it. And with that, I'm going to leave this here. Leave a like, subscribe if you enjoyed, if you comment, any feedback you have for me, and I'll see all of you later. Bye.